this video, we're going to be talking about proportional parts of triangles, and then eventually we're going to take the top off the triangle and just talk about proportional parts of parallel lines. So to start off with, here we have a triangle. If we draw a segment inside the triangle that is parallel to either of the sides, for example, here we drew a line that's parallel to the bottom of the triangle, then we are creating proportional parts in this triangle. One of the ways that we can prove that we have proportional parts or similar triangles is if we think about breaking apart this triangle. So let's take this top smaller triangle out of the entire bigger triangle, relabel that tiny triangle with R, O, and A here, and make sure we relabel that big triangle with R, I, and T. So now we have our vertices lining up for what we want there. As it turns out, we can see that angle R is going to be the same in both triangles. They overlap. But what's also true is that because we have parallel lines here, we have some corresponding angles happening. Corresponding angles, if you remember, in parallel lines are angles that are the same angle, just in a different location or on another line. So these two angles right here are corresponding angles. I mean, you could look over here as well. That would be the exact same thing. But either way, we have at least two pairs of congruent angles. So we know that the triangles are similar because of angle-angle similarity. And now we can compare their parts as proportional equal ratios. So we're just going to practice comparing proportional parts here based on the vertices in these triangles here. So we can look at the left diagram to finish it, or a good cheat here is to just always separate your triangles and then the corresponding parts are much easier to compare. But we could do either. When we talk about proportional parts in this diagram, here's what we're looking at. We're saying that, for example, RO is the top left piece of the triangle. If we compare that to the bottom left piece, IO, then we just compare the top left to the bottom left. So looking at another side of the triangle over here, as long as we keep corresponding parts lined up, for example, continuing to compare the top right to the bottom right would correspond to the top left and bottom left. So RA compared to AT or TA would be our equal ratio there. RI in this next ratio is referring to the entire left side. Compare that to IO, which is just the bottom left. So setting up corresponding parts in our next ratio, but talking about the right side, we must need the total right side compared to the bottom right side. So RT compared to TA. All right, another one. RI compared to RO, or sorry, RT compared to RA. Let's start there. RT the total right side, and RA the top right side. Let's make sure we correspond that over here. That would be the total left side compared to the top left side. So RI compared to RO. So triangles inside another triangle with one of the sides being parallel, you can compare corresponding pieces that way. If you break it apart, that allows us to easily see one more comparison here. So RO to RI would be the left sides here if we took them apart. RA to RT would be the right sides. So that must be equal to just comparing the bottom pieces, OA to IT. So if you can set up corresponding ratios, you can solve their proportions. In this first example with numbers here instead, here we have our parallel sides. So here we have our proportional parts. A few different ways we can set up proportions. However you set up your first ratio, just make sure your second ratio corresponds. So for example, I want to compare the tops, and I'm going to compare the right to the left, so 3 to 6. So to correspond on the bottom, I would keep comparing the right to the left, so y to 8. We could do it differently if we wanted. We could say we want to compare the right sides, top to bottom, so 3 to y, 
We'll keep that going on the left side, top to bottom, six to eight. One way that you can complicate it, if you get bored of that, is you can compare pieces to whole parts. So for example, I can compare this top right piece to the entire top side. So combining three and six, we get nine. So I can compare three to nine, and then I could go on the bottom and do the same thing and compare y to the total length on the bottom, which would be y plus eight. There you're involving more than one variable, and that certainly makes your proportion a little trickier to solve. So no reason to do that, but it is true that you could do that. So let's choose one of these easier ones here. Let's diagonally multiply, get our cross products. So three times eight is 24, and six times y is six y. One step, divide by six, and get your y value is four. Now we can plug it in and check it. We can see that three times two is six, so this must be what times two is eight? That must be four. All right, next example, getting a little trickier here. Still compare corresponding parts. So for example, we could compare the left sides, top to bottom, eight to six. That's equal to the right sides, top to bottom, x plus five to x, so we could do that. We could just compare the tops, left to right, 8 to x plus 5, and keep that going on the bottom, left to right, 6 to x. Again, there's other ways to do it. And no reason to, since we already have 2 to work from here. Cross multiply 8 times x is 8x. 6 times the quantity x and positive 5. Make sure you distribute. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 5 is 30. Subtract 6x from both sides. Divide by 2, and your x value is 15. All right, one more time, the most challenging here. As I suggested earlier, sometimes separating your triangles makes it a little bit easier. So that's what we're gonna do in this one. We're given this value of eight here, this bottom length on the left side, and we're told that the total length is 12, so we can use a little bit of common sense here and know that what's left over here on the top must be four in order for that side to add up to 12. So if I take this top triangle off, I have a left length of 4, bottom length is y, and right length is x. My total big triangle had a length on the left of 12. I punched a hole out of that, but that was 12 right there. On the bottom, I have a length of 18. And on the right side, combining these two, I have x plus 10. So now I can compare left sides to right sides, or bottoms whatever helps us solve for what we need. So if we need x, well, we have four compared to 12 here. That's gonna be our first ratio using two values that we know. And we can compare that to the right side, x to x plus 10. Uh, it seems that I made a little mistake right there. x to x plus 10. Let's see if I did another one differently. Uh, another way that we could do it is rather than separate it to solve for x, I could do what we did up here, just compare parts to parts. So left side to right side on the top, 4 to x, and bottoms 8 to 10, or bottom to top on the left side, 8 to 4, bottom to top on the right side, 10 to x. So I'd rather use those for sure. Uh, cross multiply. Our cross products are going to be the same. Either way, it's 8x equals 10 times 4, which is 40. Divide by 8, and we get x is 5. To solve for y, again, you could set up 4 compared to 12, the left sides, and then compare the bottoms, y to 18. Cross multiply. 12 times y is 12y, 4 times 18 is 72. Divide by 12 and we get y is 6. All right, let's take a look at our next diagram. These are just parallel lines, but if you were to extend these lines, they would intersect here and make a triangle. So essentially what we're doing in this diagram is looking at what we did in the last examples, but we're just taking the top off the triangle and we're adding a couple more 
parallel lines. So that doesn't change conceptually what we're doing. We're still going to be comparing corresponding points or corresponding lengths. You could fill in this diagram with these letters and then we'll be able to complete these ratios. So AN to NH that's just comparing the top left to the bottom left. So to correspond, we must compare the top right to the bottom right. So VI to IS. If you think you got it, you can go ahead and complete these ratios and then check your work. Otherwise, I'm going to keep explaining it. HN to HA. HN to HA would be the bottom left to the total left. So to correspond, we would need the bottom right to the total right, SI to SV. And our third ratio here, VI to VS. VI to VS is the top right compared to the total right. So to correspond, we need the top left compared to the total left, AN to AH. And then lastly, HN to SI. HN to SI, so bottoms left to right. We must need the tops compared left to right, so AN to VI. So hopefully you see that that's very similar to what we were doing in the previous examples. And we just continue to do more of the same thing here. To solve for X in this, I can compare the top left to the bottom left, 15 to X, and do top right to bottom right, 12 to 8. Cross multiply, x times 12 is 12x, 15 times 8 is 120. So one step divide by 12 and you get your x value is 10. Other options we could use if you chose to. In the next example, here we could compare. Uh, let's go right to left on the top x plus 1 to 6, so we would go right to left on the bottom, 2 to 4, so there's 1. We could go top to bottom on the right side, x plus 1 over 2. Then we go top to bottom on the left side, equals 6 over 4. Either way we do it, they all work just the same. Cross multiply to solve, so we got 6 times 2, that's 12. Our other cross product though, make sure you distribute 4 times x and 4 times 1. So 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 1 is 4. Let's subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by 4 and get x is 2. One more time, the only way to really make this tricky is to maybe think you don't have enough information. So let's think a little bit here. On the right side, we're given 3x on the bottom, and our total on the right side is 18. So notice that in order to find this length, we actually can't find it unless we know what x is. We could set up an expression, an algebraic expression, to symbolize it, which I did here. It'd be whatever 18 is the total minus 3x would be the leftovers there. But again, that's maybe making it more complicated than what's needed. Let's see what else we could do. So just think about the parts that we're given here. We're given the bottom right part and the total right side. Well, we can figure out the total left side by combining these two pieces, 10 and 15, sorry, 10 and 5 give us 15. And we are given the bottom left piece. So we have our corresponding points, our parts. Excuse me, geez. We have our totals here and we have the bottom pieces. So let's just compare those. So 5 to 15 bottom piece to total length. So compare that to the bottom piece on the other side, 3x compared to the total length of 18. Now we can cross multiply. 15 times 3x is 45x. 5 times 18 is 90. We can divide by 45 and find our x value is 2. All right, so essentially, to help you solve for unknown measures in these proportional triangles or proportional parallel lines, you're just trying to compare ratios of corresponding points, parts, parts. Let's just say that one more time. Compare corresponding parts. There you go. All right, good luck comparing corresponding parts to solve for unknown lengths.